Unlike energy that is lost as heat, the six most common elements in organic molecules, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, are conserved in biogeochemical cycles. Welcome to Moomoo Math and Science. I will go through each cycle in order, and please note, hydrogen is part of the water cycle. So, let's get started. Carbon is an element that is vital to most living organisms on Earth. It is also a key component of our atmosphere. Carbon has the ability to cycle through our Earth, the ocean, living factors, abiotic factors, in the air. The carbon recycles among five major locations. These items include the atmosphere, the terrestrial biosphere or land, the Earth's interior, the ocean, and human influence. Let's take a look at what happens at each of these areas. Carbon is found in the atmosphere in at least two forms, carbon dioxide and methane. This atmosphere carbon can be absorbed by autotrophs like plants and plankton to be used for photosynthesis. It can also be absorbed by bodies of water and the ocean. When carbon is absorbed by the ocean, it reacts with the water and creates carbonic acid. The terrestrial biosphere, which is another term for the Earth's land, has several paths of carbon that it can take. First, there is an exchange between plants and animals. Plants absorb carbon in the form of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, and animals release carbon dioxide during cellular respiration. Also, heterotrophs eat plants that contain carbon. Animals also release carbon as methane during digestion, and the soil contains decomposers that release carbon into the atmosphere and the soil. Carbon is also stored in the Earth's interior. Carbon in the lithosphere includes fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, along with deposits like limestone, and volcanoes may release some of this carbon stored in the lithosphere when they erupt. Up next, the ocean. The ocean has the greatest exchange quantity of cycled carbon and stores a large amount of carbon. The ocean absorbs carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. The ocean also has a large amount of plankton that absorbs carbon dioxide that it uses for photosynthesis. Humans also influence the movement of carbon. Humans burn fossil fuel which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Also, the production of clinker which is used for cement from limestone, also releases carbon. In addition, deforestation from humans can cause the amount of carbon in the atmosphere to increase. So there you go, an overview of the path of an atom of carbon that may take place during the carbon cycle. The water we drink today is the same water enjoyed by dinosaurs a long time ago. This is because the water cycle helps keep water going round and round. Welcome to Moomoo Math and Science and the water cycle with some demos. You're familiar with this picture of the water cycle. Water moves around and around and is constantly moving. In order to help you understand and remember the hydrologic cycle, also called the water cycle, I will show you a quick demo for these nine steps. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, transpiration, infiltration, groundwater, aquifer, runoff, and accumulation. So let's start with evaporation. Evaporation occurs when a liquid turns to gas. With this glass of water and the heat from the lamp, evaporation is occurring. The problem is you can't see the evaporation. Now if I take hot water and pour it in the bottle, the water vapor will cool and you'll have condensation. You can see the condensation on the sides of the bottle. This occurs in real life when evaporation cools and attaches to small particles in the atmosphere and clouds may form. When you get enough condensation, some of the liquid will fall, as you can see falling off the sides of the bottle. In real life, this can be rain or snow or many other forms. Next, transpiration is when plants release water vapor. You can see the water vapor on the sides of the bottle. This vapor comes from the leaves and the stems of the plant when it releases this. Plants do not use all the water that it 
absorbs from its roots and it releases some in the form of vapor. Next, infiltration is when water moves down through rocks and sand, etc. You can see the water infiltrate through these rocks. This water that moves into the ground is called groundwater. Much of this groundwater will move into an aquifer, which is represented by the sponge. Think of an aquifer as a huge sponge made of rocks. Remember, some aquifers, like the one in Florida, is as large as the entire state. The ground will not absorb all of the precipitation, and some will run off like this pan that is filled with rocks and soil. This is called runoff, and sometimes it leads to flooding. This runoff may end up in a lake or an ocean, which are examples of accumulation. Remember, during the water cycle, it does not go in a nice circle, but moves in many different directions over and over again. Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the nitrogen cycle. Our atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen. We need the nitrogen for our DNA and for proteins. But we just can't breathe in the nitrogen like oxygen. But we must absorb our nitrogen in our food. Nitrogen follows a cycle where it travels from the atmosphere to the soil to animals and back and in a cycle. Nitrogen in the atmosphere falls to the earth by precipitation such as rain or snow. Once in the soil it finds its way to bacteria on the root of, of plants. At the roots, the nitrogen is combined with hydrogen to make ammonia in a process called nitrogen fixation. Lightning in the atmosphere can also do this. Now ammonia is toxic, so additional bacteria combines this ammonia with oxygen in a process called nitrogenification. At this point, the nitrogen is, is in a form called nitrite. Additional nitrifying bacteria convert this nitrite to nitrate. At this point, plants can absorb this nitrogen in a process called assimilation. However, not all of the nitrate is absorbed, but some of it goes to the bacteria that release the nitrogen to the atmosphere in a process called denitrifying. The nitrogen returns to the atmosphere. Also, once in the animal, after it eats the plants, the animal either dies or needs to get rid of waste. Another type of bacteria then takes this and along with decomposers and breaks this nitrogen either in the waste or the dead animal. And by a process called ammonification, the nitrogen can enter the cycle once again at nitrification, and the cycle continues. I hope that helps with the nitrogen cycle, which is how nitrogen keeps recycling. Its Why we don't run out of oxygen on Earth? Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science and the Oxygen Cycle. The oxygen cycle involves the movement of oxygen between biotic, which are living factors, and abiotic, which are non-living factors. The oxygen cycle maintains the level of oxygen in our atmosphere. Processes within this cycle are considered either a source, oxygen production, or a sink, which involves oxygen consumption. But first, where do we find oxygen on Earth? The largest reservoir of the Earth's oxygen is found in the lithosphere. Silicate and oxide minerals of the crust and metal make up large portions of the lithosphere and contain oxygen. The atmosphere is made up of roughly 21% oxygen. The hydrosphere, which is the water on Earth, is 33% oxygen by volume. The biosphere, which is the sum of all ecosystems, is 22% oxygen and is found mainly in organic molecules. Oxygen moves from the atmosphere to the lithosphere and the biosphere. Let's see how oxygen is cycled among these different regions on Earth. Plants, along with phytoplankton and other organisms that carry out photosynthesis, release oxygen into the atmosphere. In fact, marine plants produce most of the oxygen in our atmosphere. Animals, 
Some bacteria and protists and other organisms that carry out cellular respiration use oxygen in order to create ATP, and they release CO2. Sunlight produces some oxygen when sunlight reacts with water vapor in the atmosphere. Decomposition, which is the breakdown of once living organisms, uses oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. Microbes use oxygen in order to break down the organisms. Rusting or oxidation involves oxygen in order to create the rust on many metals. Combustion or burning of objects like coal, wood, or fossil fuels also require oxygen and use some of it up. The oxygen continues to move around the earth from producers to consumers to keep the level in balance. Phosphorus is an essential nutrient for living organisms. It's a building block of nucleic acids like DNA and of phospholipids that form our cell membranes. It's also essential for plant growth. Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science and the Phosphorus Cycle. In the natural world, phosphorus is never encountered in its pure form, but only as phosphates, which consist of a phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygen atoms. Phosphate compounds are found in sedimentary rocks, and as the rocks weather and wear down over long time periods, the phosphorus they contain slowly leaches into the surface water and soils. Volcanic ash and fertilizer can also be significant phosphate sources. Phosphate compounds in the soil can be taken up by plants and from there transferred to animals that eat the plants. When plants and animals excrete waste or die, phosphates may be taken up by detrovores, an example is a worm, or returned to the soil. Phosphorus containing compounds may also be carried in surface runoff to rivers, lakes, and oceans where they are taken up by aquatic organisms like phytoplankton. When phosphorus containing compounds from the bodies or waste of marine organisms sink to the floor of the ocean, they form new sedimentary layers. Over long periods of time, phosphorus containing sedimentary rock may be moved from the ocean to the land and then the cycle repeats. However, this process is very slow. Phosphorus can be a limiting factor for an ecosystem. Most fertilizers contain phosphorus, which may be carried to aquatic ecosystems in surface runoff. Fertilizer carried in runoff may cause excessive growth of algae or microbes that were previously limited by the phosphorus. This phenomena is called euthification. So why is euthification harmful? When all the excess algae die and are decomposed by microbes, large amounts of oxygen are used up as their bodies are broken down. This increase in oxygen usage can sharply lower dissolved oxygen levels in the water and may lead to death of aquatic organisms. Regions of lakes and oceans that are depleted of oxygen due to a nutrient influx are called dead zones. Fertilizer runoff from the Mississippi River Basin created a dead zone of over 8,000 square miles off the coast of Mexico. All living things require sulfur in order to make protein. Let's take a look at how sulfur cycles itself around the earth. First, sulfur reserves are found in the lithosphere and are released by weathering. In addition, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide gas is released into the atmosphere by volcanic eruptions, hot springs, and the decay of biological material in swamps and bogs. Marine algae produce dimethyl sulfide that enters the atmosphere as tiny droplets. Sulfur dioxide gas also forms when dimethyl sulfide reacts with oxygen gas. The burning of fossil fuels also releases sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere and creates sulfur trioxide. The sulfur trioxide reacts with water in the atmosphere to produce sulfuric acid. Sulfur trioxide also reacts with the ammonia in the atmosphere to produce sulfate salts. The sulfuric acid and sulfate salts fall to the earth by precipitation like rainfall. The soil absorbs this sulfate salts. Plants then absorb the sulfur by absorbing, by absorbing the sulfate salts from the soil. 
Animals in turn get sulfur by eating the plants and the animals release sulfur when they decay. As animals decay, they release sulfate salts and hydrogen sulfide. Anaerobic bacteria breaks down the hydrogen sulfide into sulfur gas and the aerobic bacteria converts the sulfur into sulfate salts, which again the plants absorb. And then like any other cycle, it just keeps going around and around. So there's the sulfur cycle. Thanks for watching and remember kindness multiplies kindness. Be kind to somebody today.